So yeah, welcome everyone. And uh, today we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, how do you um, come up with ways to estimate the amount of demand that's going to be coming down the pike for the for the organization, and then marry that up with the fixed capacities available to us. So that's kind of the topic for the next hour, hour and a half. Um, if I can advance the slides. So there's you know a couple things that I think a robust demand management capacity planning solution should be able to deal with. So these are sort of the key things we'll be talking about over the next hour. We need a way that we can realistically estimate demand. Um, and we have to do that usually very early in the in the project life cycle when we maybe don't have as many details as we like to be able to uh, you know make those those commitments. We also need a way that we can assess, are we using these fixed resources that are available to us in, in the most effective manner uh, possible so that we can maximize the amount of demand that we can take on with this fixed pool of resources. And then we need a way that we can do some detailed resource planning. So what types of resources do I need on projects? When do I need them? For how long? When do they roll off? Uh, so that they're available to support other projects. So how do we come up with some detailed resource planning from those estimates that can support, you know, our detailed capacity planning and some of the other, you know, enterprise systems that we need to feed that information to. So that's sort of the the, the key themes that we're going to talk about today. And, you know, just to start off, we, we all know that uh, capacity planning is difficult. And, uh, you know, if we think about the environment that we're trying to make these planning decisions within, it's, a, it's pretty complex. On the one side, we've got our, our business stakeholders, you know, that are constantly wanting, you know, new capabilities driving the demand. Um, and they're operating in a very fluid and competitive environment uh, with new technology always uh, uh, becoming available and having to innovate so they stay ahead of their competitors. Uh, they're having to keep the customers happy and the owners of the business happy in terms of delivering on the profits. On the other side, we've got our IT organization that has to deliver on that ever-increasing demand. Uh, and they're trying to do that within constraints that they've got, within the facilities that are available to them, within the labor force and the different skills that they have available to, uh, to apply to that demand and within the, the infrastructure that's available that's constantly changing and, and the decisions on, you know, how they're going to deploy that infrastructure with the new technologies that are coming along. And then we've, we've got our, uh, our business and technology executives that are trying to balance that, you know, that ever-increasing demand with the current state of the capacity that's available to the organization. So it's a, it's a juggling act, and it makes these planning decisions very, very difficult. Um, when I was putting this together, I was looking for, you know, best practices from a capacity planning standpoint. I came across the Computer World article that had a nice summary of, of sort of nine best practices. And as I was reading through them, it struck me how they related very directly to what I do in, uh, in the estimation. Um, you know, so if we look at, you know, trying to identify key resources to be measured, well, in the estimation area, that's what are the different types of skills and roles that we need, and how do we configure our estimating solutions so that we can generate labor estimates uh, for those types of resources. Um, you know, measure the utilizations or performance of resources. Well, whenever you're measuring something, you need to be able to measure it against something. And in the estimation game, we use the productivity baseline, come in and get some quantitative facts that we can then measure our future performance against. And I'll, I'll, that's a, that'll be a recurring theme today because we'll be using a lot of historic data to support our estimating uh, and optimization activities. Um, compare utilizations to maximum capacity. So in the estimation area, that's, you know, how do we optimize our resources so that we can deliver the maximum uh, capacity for that r fixed resource pool? Um, you know, collect workload forecasts from developers and users. Well, workload, we're going to define workload in terms of uh, size and scope. Uh, capabilities that need to be defined, designed, built, tested, and delivered to the customer. So how do we define that workload in terms of some, some size and scope metrics, and then how do we use that to drive our estimates for how long it should take and how much effort we're going to need and, and uh, you know, different uh, scenarios that we might want to entertain. Um, transforming workload forecasts 
into IT resource requirements. So that's the detailed planning. How do we take these overall, you know, estimates and then break that down into the types of labor that I need for how long, uh, and uh, and then roll that up sort of uh, to a portfolio level so we can see the whole organization, you know, and with the the labor pools that are available to us. So that's kind of how things relate from a best practices on the capacity planning side to how we're going to bring estimation solutions to bear on this problem. So, you know, to just summarize why why has it been so difficult? We've got this insatiable, you know, business stakeholder demand for new capabilities. In many cases, we don't have good ways to be able to estimate that demand, and that limits our ability to negotiate with those stakeholders. Um, you know, and if we can't estimate, then obviously it's difficult to predict the types of labor that I'm going to need. And then, as we know, things change in the portfolio on a daily basis. So how do we keep up with the dynamics of, of being able to reprioritize projects and what does that do to our ability to deliver within the resource constraints that we've got in the organization? So, you know, that's why it's challenging. What are some solutions that we can bring to bear to make it better? So one of the things we have to be able to do is come up with a way that we can realistically estimate the demand. This is all about um, what we would like versus what's possible. So early on, when we're talking about capabilities on the business side, they're usually talking about things that they would like to have happen, capabilities they would like within desired time frames, within desired budgets, and it's, it's our responsibility to then take that, marry it up with some facts, and see what's possible and how far apart are they. Um, the types of facts that we need to bring to bear, it, we need some way that we can measure size and scope. The work uh, that represents the demand that the business is at, asking for, and that's not effort. We're going to define those in terms of scope-based measures, things that we have to actually, you know, define, build, and implement for, for our business stakeholders. We need to understand how productive we're likely to be at doing that work, um, and we need to know, you know, the availability of the labor force that we've got to a attack that, that uh, demand. Um, it might be useful to t take and talk a little bit about accuracy. Um, that's sort of the bane uh, of, of estimation is, you know, how accurate are the estimates and how accurate do they need to be when we need to use them to make business decisions? And then, uh, and then how do we come up with some ways that we can negotiate realistic demand solutions? Because it's very likely that we'll run into cases where we can't do everything and we're having to look at trade-offs. So what are some of those trade-offs and, uh, you know, how do we negotiate more effectively with our, with our business stakeholders? I find it useful to just lay out some terminology because um, a lot of organizations tend to use these terms interchangeably, and they're really not. They're, they're very different things. Um, so when we're talking about, you know, targets and constraints and estimates and commitments and plans, you know, it's useful to understand what they are and where they enter into the process. So a target is, a, is sort of a goal. It's something that we would like to achieve. Um, they show up a lot of times in proposals. You know, projects start off as proposals, and business stakeholders generally have some notion of what they would like in terms of the capability, but also how long they're willing to wait and how much they're willing to, to spend on that capability. Constraints are... Uh, more hard limits, either internal or external. It might be driven by, you know, a, a law that gets passed, and and we have to have this capability in place, you know, on a certain date, or we have to pay penalties and fines. So these are real hard types of limits that we have to try and operate within, whether it's a schedule-driven thing or a cost-driven thing or a quality-driven thing that, you know, uh, uh, can, can be, you know, even more severe. Um, an estimate is a technical calculation 